Welcome back everyone. So today we're looking at Lori Vallow again. This time over the court case that she had yesterday. She was in court yesterday to enter her plea on the two most serious crimes that are against her right now. The two felonies. The felony number one count of destroying or hiding evidence and the second felony conspiracy to destroy or hide evidence. So let's take a look at it. The brief court appearance that Lori Vallow had yesterday in front of Judge Dane H. Watkins Jr. It was only about six minutes in total length besides the format, you know, removing the formalities of who you, who are you, this is the judge, what's your name, say your name, blah, 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 blah. The actual meat of the actual court appearance boils down to about six minutes in total length. Even though the total time she was in there and then she left was about 14 minutes. A couple of things that we learned from yesterday's court, court appointment and her entering the plea. First, she has decided that she wants a jury trial, not a bench trial with just a judge deciding her fate. She wants a jury of her peers to decide if she's guilty or not guilty on the charges that are levied against her. That's number one. Number two we learned is that the pre-trial motion hearing has been set tentatively for March 22nd of next year, followed by the actual trial to start April of 2021. The third thing that we learned also on top of that is the clock starts yesterday when she was in court with her attorney, Mr. Means, on the charges of you know, these two felonies. <clears throat> the clock starts now. He has 60 days to file motions for certain things if he wants them done you know, before the trial starts. And those motions are change of venue, File a motion to have bail reduced. Yes. Yes. I know. Nauseating as it is, he can file for an additional motion to have bail reduced. Other things that he may file a motion, and he has the next 60 days to file these motions for, removal of any statements or conversations as evidence that she may have made from the time that she was arrested in Hawaii and transported back to Idaho. Now these would could be you know any statements that she may have made at all but for you know, what we know right now she hasn't been cooperative with any law enforcement or wanting to make any statements at all with regarding this case to anyone. So it's most likely that she didn't make any statements or admissions during the actual flight and transport. The other thing is, that he has 60 days to request is moving her to a segregated cell by herself so she is away from general population. He can request a motion to say, look, for her safety, she needs to move. And then the last thing we learn is that he has the next 60 days to file a motion to have all TVs and reporters blocked from the courtroom. He has the next 60 days to file all those motions. And the clock started yesterday from the date that she put in her, her plea of not guilty. If he wants to have her psychologically evaluated to see if she is fit to stand trial, he can do that all the way up until March 22nd of next year. There's no real time limit on that. There's also no motion, you know, you know, deadline on if he, you know, wants to have uh, certain witnesses, you know, excluded. 
but if he wants to split the trial and make sure that it's you know it it is not combined with Chad's, he will have to wait until after the judge, um, Dane H. Watkins Jr. Um, has decided if uh, you know it is going to proceed forward. That motion has already been filed by the state of Idaho to combine the two cases. If they decide yes, the case will be combined, the two of them, then her attorney has the right to file a motion to be heard and ex um, explain why he believes the two cases should be separated. So that's what we learned yesterday from Lori Vallow's brief interaction in court and her enter of the pleas of not guilty. Now, I'd like to talk to you about a statement that came out in the news and that was published on the East Idaho News Bureau's website. In the description of this video, I will post the link to that article for you to read the entire thing yourself. This is a statement that was made by a lady who was incarcerated on probation violations there in the same jail as Lori Vallow. She says that she spent four days with Lori while Lori was going through the initial bail bonds part of the, you know, after extradition back from Hawaii. She said that only her and Lori basically were the only two people who were kept in a segregation, you know, um, cell away from the gen general population. It was just the two of them. This, this is her statement. And you can read it for yourself again. The description is in the bit, you know, the link, live link you can click on to East Idaho News is in the description. I have some real problems with some of the statements that she has made. And I've said it before, and, it, and it's worth saying again. In a high profile case like this, people want to become connected to the case. They want to be part of it. They want people to look at them. They want the spotlight to shine on them for a little bit, even if it's just as an anonymous source and they know people are reading it and they're commenting on what they have to say. Some of the things that she said in this statement, you know, her account of the four days that she spent with Lori, I have problems with. Mainly when she talks about her being on the phone talking to Chad and to her son Colby. She said that she sometimes wore earbuds when all talking on the phone and other times she didn't so she was able to hear the conversations when she wasn't wearing the earbuds. I want to talk to you now and give you a little information about the closed caption television uh, system that they have there in the jail where Lori is currently housed. The jail there is has a screen. It's approximately six inches by four inches that you will see the other person that you're communicating with. The other person must pay for the actual phone call and they're not cheap. Believe me, they are not. I don't know the actual breakdown of the cost per minute for the jail where Lori is, but the average is around two twenty-five a minute, two dollars and twenty-five cents a minute. And she said that Colby, a broke, unemployed, you know, new father, had two twenty-five a you know to pay for you know uh, endless conversations. She went on to say that Lori spoke to Colby for almost two days straight. Again, Colby would have to pay for the, that phone call. I have a problem believing that Colby has the money to do that. Or the desire. Especially after his mother would blow him off and not tell him, where's JJ? Where's Ty Lee? And then she told him to read the scripture of, scriptures from the Old Testament. The scriptures of Job from the Old Testament. And wouldn't answer any questions. I have problems believing that he would want to communicate with her any farther than that. 
and then we'd have the money. But the biggest problem I have with that statement and the rest of her statements that she made is the earbuds. You're looking at a six inch by four inch screen of the other person. You have a concrete and metal stool that is attached to the wall by bolts. You can't move it. It's uncomfortable. You then pick up a hand receiver like a telephone and speak to the other person. And they you see them on a conference of on of theirs on their end talking to you. The earbuds that are available, and yes, these are available, I'm not disputing that part, are not individual like earbuds like Raycons or something you'd put in one ear. It's a loop and it has earbuds attached to it and it's Wi-Fi and they go into your ear. She said she sometimes wore them and she sometimes didn't. This is the lady who got burner phones for anybody and everybody to use that was near her circle of friends. She destroyed or hid evidence because she didn't want anybody to be able to come back and prosecute her for crimes that she committed. She went out of her way to come up with cover stories for everything that she was doing and everything she'd ever done. This lady who has gone from here to here into the extremes and beyond hiding and destroying and covering up now all of a sudden is in jail and she becomes relaxed and she allows another party to hear her conversations I don't buy it I don't buy it for a second Lori is she's a lot smarter than she looks and she what she's doing right now is she's playing a game with the courts with you with me with the world and everybody out here this is all a game and as she said she made the statement like you know also and you can read in in there that Lori made a joke to her one day when she said she was going out to see if she could get bail she dragged her fingers from her head to her toes and said we'll see if all this is worth a million dollars that's just how conceited she is narcissistic conceited narcissistic personality but I don't believe that you know, the story that she got to listen to the conversations I also don't buy the story that Lori was brought in in a bulletproof vest and wearing a jumpsuit when Lori got off the airplane from Hawaii she was wearing blue jeans, a t-shirt, a sweatshirt, and her hands were handcuffed through the pocket of the sweatshirt. No bulletproof vest coming off of the airplane at all. So did they put the bulletproof vest on her in the actual squad car when they took her from the airport to the jail? Or did they, once the car pulls in through the metal gate and the gate closes behind them and then the car pulls into the actual bay in a building and then the door closes behind them. Did they put the bulletproof vest on her then? She did have to change out of her street clothes into a jail outfit. That much is true. The stripes are not necessarily something that every woman there wears. They wear either a pink and white stripes, or they wear pink, or they wear orange. She describes Lori as coming in wearing a pink and white striped outfit. Those stripes are the same ones that she most likely wore. But again, where'd the bolt proof vest come from? She wasn't wearing it at the airport. There are plenty of pictures, and here are a couple of them. Here coming off of the airplane. Hear her walking through the airport. Where is the bulletproof vest? A 
again. Stories like this that come out in the news are from people who want to be attached to the story. Maybe they think they know something. Maybe they just want to feel important. In everybody's life, we want to feel important. We want to feel like we belong. But here, I don't believe what she has to say. Because it's strike one, strike two, strike three, you're out of here. I don't believe anything you have to say after you get to strike three. Earbuds, isolation chamber, bulletproof vest. I don't believe in three of them. And I don't and if we have to count a fourth in there, that she would that Lori, in all of her paranoia, would allow anyone else to hear her conversations ever. So <clears throat> that's all I want to talk to you about today when it comes to Lori Vallow. Please stay safe out there. Until next time.